Proverbs 18.5 says that it is not good to show partiality to the wicked or to overthrow the righteous in judgment. And yet, we are living in a time when this world is steadily positioning itself and even deceived Christians to sympathizing with unrepentant sinners and scandalizing true saints. Romans 1.18-32's moral corruption and satanic deception is everywhere and is proving that this world is already under God's judgment. Even among Christians, there are those who make apologies for God's created order while sympathizing with those whose lifestyles his word flatly condemns. They fear offending sinners, but don't mind offending the Savior. So if there's any confusion, it is caused by the fact that people, even under the guise of Christianity, have sinful things they want to continue doing while also claiming to be children of God. But such is a fool's errand because God will never approve of sin. Remember, it put his faultless son on a cruel cross. So woe to those who attempt to make sin acceptable. Try to warn people that their hatred, unforgiveness, slander, violence, lying, stealing, cheating, adultery, or the most culturally sensitive topic of homosexuality is condemned by God, and you are likely to be asked something like, who are you to judge? Well, let me tell you who you are to judge if you are a true Christian. You are commanded by Christ to judge righteous judgment. That means that you are to make biblically based appraisals of your sins and yes, even the sins of others. Doing so keeps you from compromising with sin. Doing so is also part of the process of leading others out of darkness and into the light of Christ. No one has ever saved someone from sin by standing with them in their sinful lifestyles. No one, not even Jesus, did such a thing, and yet, somehow, many think that they can do it. And how prideful is that? If you find that you cannot muster up enough love for others to make righteous judgments about their sins in the effort to lead them to Christ, then it would be better to not make any judgments favorable or unfavorable about them. You are not ready to. Why? Because at that point, it is your heart that is not right, and it is deceiving you. In other words, if you really love people and you truly love God, you will want with all of your heart for them to be right with God too. That is, of course, if you actually are. So do not feel burdened or pressured by a society that is calling good evil and evil good. Just be so in love with God and His kingdom and His righteousness that you are willing to do all you can to live like Christ and stand on the truth of God's word. Never compromise biblical truth for a temporary earthly relationship. And in case you'd like to know how I respond when someone asks me, who are you to judge? I say something like this. I'm not perfect, and I do indeed hate my sins at least as much as I hate your sins. And no, I don't hate others' sins more than I hate my own sins. I hate all sin, and so should you. And besides that, I'm not condemning you. I'm trying to help you. If we were both held captive by terrorists who planned to execute us and I got free, would you want me to sit and sympathize with you? Or would you want me to help you get free too? Well, my friend, there is a fate worse than beheading for any and all who do not repent from sin and truly trust in Jesus. You see, he is the person that will one day cast both unsaved soul and body into hellfire. You see, saints, the difference with us should be that we confess our sins to the Lord knowing that he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. True Christians do not try to make their sins acceptable, and they definitely don't push for the legalization of sin. So never let unrepentant people shame you into silence about judging sin. Time is short. If you truly believe in Christ's sudden return, then you also know that you don't have the luxury of helping people spend a little more time sinning while also hoping that they will somehow inherit the kingdom of heaven. Besides, you don't even know if they'll live to see tomorrow. Such a compromise is to essentially say to God that his command to all people to repent and that now is the day of salvation are secondary to how you feel about them. Such inclusive, inoffensive, tolerant tactics are the height of Satan's deception. Just as he once did in the Garden of Eden, the devil wants to make people feel like they will not surely die. He knows that unless you repent and believe in Jesus Christ, you will die in your sins and spend eternity in hellfire. So saints, be honest with them. Be loving. Be firm. Be courageous. Be sure you are right with God yourself, which means born again and not practicing sin. Then you will be judging righteously. It is the only way sinners will know that their sins are separating them from a holy God. Beloved, we didn't receive the mind of Christ in order to set it aside to avoid offending people. He gave us the ability to judge all things so that through the renewing of our minds, we can continually prove what is God's good, acceptable, and perfect will. So for the glory of God and His Son, Jesus Christ, Judge all sin. Just leave the condemning part to him.